On the Equilibrium of Planes Greek, peri and is a treatise by Archimedes in two volumes. The first book establishes the law of the lever, and locates the center of gravity of the triangle and the trapezoid. According to Papus of Alexandria, Archimedes' work on levers caused him to remark, "'Give me a place to stand on, and I will move the earth'." Greek. The second book, which contains ten propositions, examines the centers of gravity of parabolic segments. <laughs> Structure of the text Book 1 contains 15 propositions with seven postulates. In Proposition 6 Archimedes establishes the law of the lever, concluding that, "...magnitudes are in equilibrium at distances reciprocally proportional to their weights." In Propositions 10 and 14, respectively, Archimedes locates the center of gravity of the parallelogram and the triangle. Additionally, in Proposition 15, he establishes the center of gravity of the trapezium. The second book, which contains ten propositions, studies parabolic segments exclusively. It examines these segments by substituting them with rectangles of equal area, an exchange made possible by results obtained in the quadrature of the parabola. Main theorem. Archimedes' proof of the law of the lever is executed within Proposition 6. It is for commensurable magnitudes only, and relies upon Propositions 4, and 5, and on Postulate 1. Introduction In Postulate 1 Archimedes states that, "...equal weights at equal distances are in equilibrium." meaning one equal weight on either side of the lever arm. At propositions 4, and 5, he expands this observation to include the concept of the center of gravity, wherein it is proven that the center of gravity of any system consisting of an even number of equal weights, equally distributed, will be located at the midpoint between the two center weights hence introducing multiple weights on either side of the lever arm. Topic. Statement Given two unequal, but commensurable, weights and a lever arm divided into two unequal, yet commensurable, portions see sketch opposite Proposition 6 states simply that if the magnitudes A and B are applied at points E and D, respectively, the system will be in equilibrium if the weights are inversely proportional to the lengths A B equals C D E C display style A B equals C D E C topic proof Therefore assume that lines and weights are constructed to obey the rule using a common measure or unit n and at a ratio of 4 to 3 as per the sketch now, double the length of ed by duplicating the longer arm on the left, and the shorter arm on the right. For demonstration's sake, reorder the lines so that CD is adjacent to LE the two red lines together, and juxtapose with the original as below. It is clear then, that both lines are double the length of the original line ed, that LH has its center at E see adjacent red lines, and HK its center at D note, additionally, that A which is equal to CD carries the common divisor, or unit N, an exact number of times, as does EC, and therefore, by inference, CH2. It remains then to prove that A applied at E, and B applied at D, will have their center of gravity at C. Therefore, as the ratio of LH to HK is not 4 to 3, but 8 to 6, similarly divide the magnitudes A and B a transformation that conserves their original ratio of 4 to 3, and align them as per the diagram opposite. A centered on E, and B centered on D. Now, since an even number of equal weights, equally spaced, have their center of gravity between the two middle weights, A is in fact applied at E, and B at D, as the proposition requires. 
Further, the total system consists of an even number of equal weights equally distributed, and, therefore, following the same law, C must be the center of gravity of the full system. Thus A applied at E, and B applied at D, have their center of gravity at C. Authenticity <inaudible> 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 Whilst the authenticity of Book II is not doubted, a number of researchers have highlighted inconsistencies within Book I's presentation. Berggren, in particular, questions the validity of Book I as a whole, highlighting, inter alia, the redundancy of Propositions 1 to 3, 11, and 12. However, Berggren follows Dijksterhaus, in rejecting Mack's criticism of Proposition 6. Adding that its true significance lies in the fact that it demonstrates that if a system of weights suspended on a balance beam is in equilibrium when supported at a particular point, then any redistribution of these weights, that preserves their common center of gravity, also preserves the equilibrium. Further, it should be noted that Proposition 7 is incomplete in its current form, so that Book 1 demonstrates the law of the lever for commensurable magnitudes only. <laughs> 